Yo, it's uh, Marco Catanio representing Charles Sturt University, um, subject coordinator for ITI 597. And in today's topic, we're going to talk about service assets. What are service assets and how are they being used? Yeah, my favorite website, or one of my favorite, one of my favorite websites, and dictionary.com. What's an asset according to dictionary.com? As a noun, it's a useful and desirable thing or quality. It's a single item of ownership having exchange value. And assets? Items of ownership convertible into cash. Items detailed on a balance sheet. All property available for the payment of debts. Property in the hands of an heir, executor or administrator. Uh, there you have it. This all comes from dictionary.com. Uh, when you think of like an asset. We've seen this uh, slide before uh, when we talked about resources and capabilities. Uh, just realize that resources and capabilities, uh, they are both examples of assets. Uh, of assets you own and things you can do. So let's see. Uh, what are they again? Very quickly. We've got our resources, for example, financial capital, money, infrastructure like hardware and network items. We've got applications, the software, the business applications and the office applications. We've got information, uh, data, and, uh, data and records. And we've got people also being resources. From the other side, we've got like the capabilities and realize the word able is in there. I'm able to do something with those resources. I've got the ability to. I've got the ability to manage those resources. I've got the proper organization in, in place, like the structure and, and the culture. I've got the supporting processes in place. I've got the knowledge uh, available to manage all those resources. And by the way, I also have like capable people. So uh, not all your people being resources are also capable to do the job. So there is definitely an overlap, but there's also a difference. And uh, you may have like a person that is actually not capable to do the job properly. So they actually fit in like both, box, both boxes. Okay, so how do these service assets actually work and how do they fit into like the model of service management? Hey, say I'm a large air airline company and I want to allow my, uh, my customers, my customers out there to like book their flights online. So in other words, uh, as a customer, as the company, the airline company, I've got a demand for like a certain like uh, online booking service. So let's see if actually of like IT, eh, like the business unit IT can provide that service to me. So what do they need? Well, they need like assets. They need assets to provide that service in the form of like capabilities that are able to coordinate, control and deploy the resources that I will need to deliver my products and services to my customer. Okay, so in the end, if it all works, then I'm now able to provide these products and services and my online booking service to my customer. And if my customer is happy, of course, I, I, they will probably pay for it as well. So also, if I'm providing services and they actually generate returns on my behalf. So it all works pretty well, this model. It's a nice, little, tiny, good, valuable model. So how are we then moving from service assets uh, to business outcomes? Again, another model, also an, a small one, but I think a very valuable one, just to get like to get the picture. So here, we, where do we start? We start here. We've got a service unit, uh, for example, in IT, and and we've got our service assets and capabilities and resources. So we're like, for example, like a, a unit within an IT service unit, and we're providing IT services. Well, that's the idea, because if we're able to provide uh, services using our capabilities and resources. Uh, we create like so-called service potential. Now, hopefully, if these services are used by the business units eh, to do their work, they actually create like so-called performance potential. So, if I'm adding my IT services eh, to the customer assets, capabilities, and resources, eh, it should all become like a, a happy party out there. And in the end, if the business unit is able to use the services, is able to use their own like potential, then of course we can actually create like value and potential for like the customers, the real customers out there and who pay our uh, who pay for our services or buy our products. So in the end, we're now creating value potential uh, for business outcomes. That's where like IT and the business come together. Uh, IT being the service units, and and the business now uh, being the business units. We have to bring those two together. 
Yeah, practice what you preach. Hey, uh, getting to understand the concept of dealing with service assets, okay? What differences can you think of when considering service assets? So, uh, think of resources as a service asset and think of capabilities as a service asset. Now, resources, I think, are typically, well, relatively easy to obtain. They're typically something that you can own. They're not really time dependent and they're mo more or less tangible. Where capabilities, they're, I would say, more, more, more difficult to obtain, well, relatively more difficult to obtain. Typically, it's something that you can do uh, rather than something you own. They're time dependent, it takes time eh, to build up your skills. And they're less tangible. I'm not necessarily saying they're intangible, but they're less tangible. See if you can find some more differences between resources and capabilities. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Uh, simple question. Hey, which one of the following statements is incorrect considering the concept of service assets? Answer A. Processes are easier to set up than acquiring new applications. Answer B. Both service units and business units have the potential to add value. Answer C. Service assets are made up of resources and capabilities. And answer D. Capabilities create the ability to coordinate, control and deploy resources. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer and then we'll continue. Okay, the answer is answer A. Processes are not easier to set up than acquiring new applications. Uh, I think it's easier to buy like a piece of software than actually like designing the processes on how to manage and maintain the software. Next topic, um, we're going to define and explain the concept of a release policy. A release policy. Hey, until then, live long and prosper, nanu nanu, and as always, I'll be back.